What's good everybody, it's your boy Mamza from Other Gaming, and today guys I'm coming to you with a brand new deck profile guys, but before we get into that, make sure you guys like, comment, and of course if you're new to the channel, please subscribe guys, we are doing an insane giveaway at 6,000 subscribers, and I might just have to tell you what that giveaway is very soon to motivate you guys to subscribe, because I see majority of you guys are not subscribed, so please just sub. You know it doesn't hurt and you guys do get updated whenever we upload insane content and then of course before we start make sure you guys check out that insane patreon link down below and you can see all the awesome opportunities that we offer you guys and that you guys can actually take advantage of and in order to become a better player or just a better person in general make sure you guys please do check that out as well but anyways without further ado let's get straight into this deck profile so guys, starting off with the deck file, of course we are going to be playing three of the most important, or one of the most important engines of the deck, which is Alistair the Invoker. The reason why this guy is so important in the deck is you always want to be able to open at least one fusion spell in your opening hand, whether it's going first or second, and Alistair just helps become that because there's not many normal sums in this deck. Well, to be honest, there aren't really any normal sums in this deck apart from Alistair the Invoker, and he's essentially a walking, talking invocation in himself. Like opening Alistair the Invoker just essentially automatically pluses you Invocation plus Alistair. So all you just need is like one other monster in hand for you potentially be able to combo off and get other sorts of plays. And on top of that, even if you have the other cards, he is just a one card Makaba and you can Makaba before the fifth summon. So you can't play around the viewer like that. So that's why, of course, you play triple Alistair the Invoker. Um, any other variants or Invoke variants that are playing any other ratio of this guy, um, I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you should probably refund your deck. Maybe you should probably sell it online on eBay at a very low price um, because you don't deserve to be playing that deck if you don't play Alistair at three. Um, but yeah, anyways, moving on um, from Triple Alistair, I am playing double Reshadol Wendy. No, I'm not playing three Reshadol Wendy. I prefer to play two uh, Reshadol Wendy. I know what she does. You know, she's the E-Telly where like you can flip face down and she does have, when she's flip face up, you can spell someone as well. Like she is really, really good. Um, in that regard but overall like again I just don't really feel like it's that important especially if you play cards um, like Squamata that I'd give you an additional foolish burial but again refresh it all Wendy is super insane but I just don't feel like it should be a three up because you want to see different Shadals in your hand you don't want to see the same Shadal with the same attributes same typings with all sorts of things like that because you want to be able to have multiple lines of play depending on what your opponent does and that's why I play two refresh all Wendy moving on I decided to play two Shadal Beast you can play one of this guy and to be honest most analysts do play one but in testing and even before when i used to play the deck as well two should all beasts would always come up because there'd be instances where i would just really need the draw like i would need to filter through my deck to see cards to help me actually push um, my opponent to like the breaking point and beast actually did come up in a lot of those instances and yeah for the most part you want to be able to beast once to draw a card but then wendy can summon beast again and then you can sort of like ghetto graceful charity so it is really good as well so that's why i feel like running two shadal beasts is actually very very good but again you guys can play the one and um by no means again is this the most correct ratio i just feel like personal preference this is my list and that's what i'm showing you guys but then of course we play double um shadal skamata again you don't want to be playing three of these cards and the reason why is because you don't want to open multiple of them in your hand um with like other cards because you don't want to have to go invocation and send like two squamatas from your hand to the graveyard right you'd rather go like invocation send like a squamata in a beast or a squamata in a wendy you want to have one ofs in your hand but then of course you want to play two ofs um of the cards you need because you still want to be able um to have one with desire statistically speaking it is correct again like playing three makes sense but again you're always not going to be guaranteed um to open like triple desires or like one desires or whatever whatever so that's why i feel like playing two ofs is okay moving on then we play the one dragon i know a lot of people um play just uh two dragons but i just felt like one was good enough and then i play the one hedgehog um you can call hedgehog for a uh, dragon but hedgehog does provide utility like when he's sent to the graveyard you add a straw monster so like if in case if you're missing something or like in your hand you have like double fusion spells plus a hedgehog you can actually be able to like fuse hedgehog and something away add like a wendy and then fuse again to like a contract or something and the hedgehog will trigger and add something so it isn't that bad um and then i play the one uh nature doll aerial and aerials uh specific for two combos so the first combo is of course the standard rush it all banish flip aerial aerial smash summon the monster back and then like combo off like that but then the second combo is like a combo or more like an interaction where you make a construct your opponent's turn and then construct will foolish aerial 
and then aerial will trigger and like banish the cards from your opponent's graveyard like a quick effect soul release in a sense um but she only banishes three but it's pretty good like when your opponent starts loading his graveyard up for like maybe like when they send a block dragon or um when they have like eldritch cards you can send aerial to banish all the cards so it's pretty good um and yeah so i don't play falco because i think falco is actually dookie cheeks and um if you guys think falco is actually good i don't know what you guys are doing because um like realistically speaking if you think about it falco is the slowest card that you could possibly have in a deck that you literally kind of want to turbo a fusions turn as much as possible get your floodgate monsters get your negates on board and stop your opponent from playing and falco is just super slow and on top of that, yes, I know that you can construct during your opponent's turn and send Falco, but why would I ever do that when I can Fal uh, construct on my opponent's turn and I can send like a dragon or I can send like an aerial or I can send like, you know what I mean? So there you go. Then moving on, we play the uh, damage juggler and the trick on. Now this is specifically for lights. I felt like I did not have enough lights in this deck and I wanted to be able to play as many lights as possible. Yes, Alistair gets you to a light because he can get you to a secure guard now, but I just felt like I would much rather um, be able to play cards like damage juggler and trick clown where they provide like versatility on top of that like so it is really good um and then trick clown again especially himself so basically two monsters then moving on we play triple nibiru again you need more lights in the deck and again nibiru is like one of the most high impact hand drops in this current format i say this in every deck for i always have triple nibiru in it if you're not getting it at this point i don't know what what you want me to tell you and honestly it is kind of budget because uh everybody should have nibiru it's almost been a year so i feel like everybody should have nibiru or access to a nibiru at least and then we play Triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Um, again, like these, this card's very like versatile in what it provides. One of the most high impact head drops in the format because you can hit everything. And yeah, like again, uh, these cards are just super standard. You can play any other cards you want. Like there are three flex spots, no six flex spots, maybe seven or eight flex spots in this deck. Um, so again, you can go accordingly, but this is what I play right now. Then again, we want to play as many fusion spells as possible. So we're rocking triple Al Shadal Fusion, quick play Shadal Fusion, that's all it is. Um, field and hand, most of your plays revolve around this card during your opponent's turn to some window to lock your opponent out of playing the game. So that's why you play triple Al Shadal Fusion. Then moving on, we play triple Shadal Fusion, so a regular Shadal Fusion. Really good card because if you open it going first, it's really nice. But going second, it provides us even more insane value because like you can go shut off fusion, send something, send something from your deck, and then just summon a monster for free. So one card essentially nets you like a plus three because like you go shut off fusion, right? Now you send uh, like a dark, a dark. Okay, say for example, you send like this guy and this guy, summon Apcolone. Now Apcolone will negate, Beast will draw, Wendy will summon. Now you have monster on board already, shut off fusion, you have plus beast will draw so you essentially went like plus three so this card is really really good in what it provides especially with, like summon a construct going second like break a board it's crazy so yeah triple shadow fusion is uh for sure you should be playing these guys in this high count then i'm rocking triple super poly to be honest i didn't i don't really like this just because the adam Spader board it feels like doesn't really lose super poly all that much and i'd much rather be playing cards like call by the grave so again you guys can play call of the grave or super poly i just personally felt like it's just so bad like Especially cards like Herald, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it's it's really weird. Um, it's really really weird for sure. But you can play Super Poly um, right now. Don't get me wrong. But I just felt like, in gen generally speaking, I don't feel like this card is like really good right now in this current metagame. But you can be siding it for sure, and then just make space like Call of Gave or maybe like Dark Ruler No More or something like that to help you go second. Then we're playing Triple Indication because you play Power of Desires, and again we play three, six, nine. 12 ways to get to at least one fusion spell in our opening hand so i feel like it is pretty consistent and then watch this 12 right 12 plus 3 is what exactly 14 kidding it's 15 so basically not nah, i'm kidding it's 17 but it's 15 but yeah so um now you have 3 6 9 12 15 you have 15 ways of getting to psych allied 16 psych allied yep 16 so you have 16 ways of getting into an opening hand of having access to a fusion spell i don't know what i was just saying there but essentially you have 16 ways of getting to a fusion spell in your opening hand uh being able to hard draw them or being able to search them initially so that's why i feel like this monster count is really really good what it provides yes it, it can get a little cloggy but that's why we are rocking our triple pot of desires triple pot of desires is really really good like this card is so insane in what it provides and basically like when i play pot of desires i want to at least be able to get get to one 
every single duel, no matter what. I want to be able to resolve at least one pot of desires and draw two every single duel. Because whether you're winning, you can pot of desires for more like impact cards, like Ash, Nibiru. If you're losing, you can pot of desires to get your side deck cards or just your starter cards, you know, like bait a lot in the gates. Desires, desires is really good at baiting the gates, especially if you already have the cards in your hand to perform like an access code OTK and stuff like that. So I feel like pot of desires is really good and I always want to be able to resolve at least one and I want to maybe see two in every single duel I play, no matter what deck I'm playing, if I play Potter's Eye, if I play it. Then we move on to Foolish Burial. I mean, why would you not play this card? Foolish Burial triggers every single one of your um, Shadal monsters and your Trick Clowns and your Clowns, sorry. So you go Foolish, send this, boom, send this, 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 this. Foolish is essentially another form of Skomada, another form of Construct, um, except it's not like a goods, but you know what I mean, right? You can just Foolish get to Skomada and the Skomada can send the card. So it doesn't really matter in that regard. And then you guys saw the one Terraforming and then we are playing double Rest Shadal Incarnation. Okay, why am I playing two Yuras? So essentially, Shadal's is a grind deck, right? You want to be able to grind as much as possible. One Rest Shadal is enough for the combo, but two Rest Shadal's is super insane because it has the Monster Reborn effect where it's like, blah, blah, um, try one Shadal monster and gave a special summon in face up or face down defense position. So like, worst case scenario, if your board does get broken and you are in the mid to late game, you can use Rest Shadal Incarnation to special summon cards like Construct, like Wenda, like Al Capone, and these cards can disrupt your opponent during their turn, and then during your turn, you can actually link these cards off, trigger cards, add back this card, add back this card, add back this card. You see the play, like, you see what I'm talking about? It's really, really good, um, and that's why I play double Rest Shadal Incarnation. Even if I didn't play Pot of Desires, I would still play two, uh, two Rest Shadal Incarnation. So that's it for the main deck. Um, side deck, again, like I said, usually I have cards that I recommend, but apart from Call by the Cave, there's nothing else I would recommend, to be honest. I guess maybe more super poly targets, but like I'm having trouble just finding a good one for um, the Admin Spader board. So please let me know down below if you guys have um, like any recommendations of like what super poly targets you can do. Because they end with like they end with like Herald, they end with like Savage Dragon, an Appaloosa, and like a Block Dragon. So it is really um, difficult to deal with. But then moving on to the extra deck, guys, we play uh, double El Shadal Construct. Do not play one of this; like you will regret it. People can play three if they want, but I feel like two is the perfect number. Um, one is good, but again, like you're gonna need the second one in the mid to late uh, game. Two is really good. Um, if you need three, it's either you didn't manage your resources properly or you got super unlucky. It's probably the latter where you just got unlucky because it's Yu-Gi-Oh and your opponent always has the answers to your monsters. But yeah, for the most part, you always wanna play two Elsa Doll Construct. You wanna play two window, for sure, for sure, two window. Like you can play this card at three, but two is good enough. One, because you stun your opponent, then two, when you link this card off and then summon it back again. So there you go. One, Apcolone. Um, I was playing two, but I wanted to make space for another card. Basically, Apcolone is really good in chain blocking because what he does is you can summon Apcolone and then go chain link three Apcolone, like target your Alistair on board and then like do your chain link. So the only chain link they can respond to is Apcolone. And since Apcolone is chain blocking, can't really do anything about that. That's why I play Apcolone. And the reason why I only play one Apcolone is because of the new addition with Invoked Avoides. And, and especially, essentially what this guy does is, he's sort of like a moon, black rose moonlight dragon, if you guys don't know what that is. It's like on summon, or if this card's by summon, or monster by summon to your opponent's side of the field, try one monster your opponent controls, destroy it. And then he has the other factor, you can banish one fusion monster, this card gains attack equal to that banished monster's attack until the end of your opponent's turn. So you summon a Goides, you go Goides effect, you banish like a construct, and then essentially he's like a 4800 beater who can pop a card whenever monster special summon and in this current metagame a lot of people need special summon right and this is really good disruption in himself that's why i'm playing this card then moving on to the invoked side of the deck we just play the one invoke macabre because you want the suitor in the gates and macabre is really good we play the one Purgatrio for the OTKs. We play the one Kaliga, and the reason why I chose to play Kaliga is because of the super cool interaction with like Cross Sheep, where you can like bring back Kaliga, and you can make like a Winda Kaliga, or you can make like Makaba Kaliga. And Makaba Kaliga is essentially VFD because um, it says your opponent can only right here uh, attempts to activate. None of their player can activate effects, so that's this turn. So basically, you have Kaliga, you have Makaba, right? Your opponent goes reveal danger. You go Makaba negate. Why would you negate it? Because that was your opponent's one monster effect. And since it was negated, it didn't matter because they still attempted to activate. So now they can't use any monster effects for that's their turn. They have to deal with Kaliga Makaba with like a cross sheep on board, to be honest. And for the most part, during the next turn, you can link all these guys away into like an access code and kill your opponent. But yeah, then moving on, we played the one uh, Salamander Al Mirage. So Al Mirage is really good because of the whole like Alistair the Invoker play, as well as like there are other um, sort of cute interactions that you can do. The one Secure Gardener again for Invoker, you go Al Mirage and Secure Gardener. Free Light Monster on board and it lets you get to Indication. 
Um, the one cross shape, because again, cross shape like helps you ladder into other monsters. Helps you like, to be honest, for the most part, sometimes you actually just end with cross shape in the extra monster zone, and you end with like a window and like something else, so it is really good. Um, the one unicorn, because again, cross shape going second, ladders into unicorn, unicorn, pitch card, shuffle card back on the field, and then unicorn plus another monster, ladders into access code. Access code effect, target unicorn, gain 3k, he goes to 5300. You just need a monster with like 2700 attack. Yeah, you just need a monster 2700 attack, and this guy is 28. Um, so access code will just pop thing, and then uh, Makaba is really good for OTK as well. Same with the so access code. And this card, like in a sense, kind of replaces Boral Sword. I'm not saying this card is better than Boral Sword, but this card does replace Boral Sword in this specific deck because it is less um, resource intensive because you can just go like unicorn and something away into it rather than going cross sheep and four monsters into it so you can ladder into it and then we play the one appalooza bow the goddess because um for the most part going first if we have cross sheep plus additional monsters just go cross sheep and those monsters into appalooza then you go like appalooza window with like maybe like a monster on board so you can uh be ready to set up for the next turn to otk so guys, that was the deck profile. If you guys are interested in combos, if you guys are interested in test hands, any other decks, make sure you guys let me know down below and I will be sure to get straight to it. Again, guys, make sure you guys check out our Patreons. Huge shout out to our Patreons who are already supporting us, guys. They are taking advantage of the awesome opportunities. But yeah, anyways, guys, like I always say, this is Hamza. Keep on shining. Never give up on your dreams. Peace.